All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Batman ball python. The Batman actually consists of three genes, the spot nose, the leopard, and the clown. And as a matter of fact, it actually consists of four genes because the clown is a recessive mutation. You actually need two copies of the clown for a visual. And when it comes to clown combos, I'd say the Batman is probably one of the most visually impressive combinations in all of the clowns. As a matter of fact, it's, it's kind of hard to hit if you actually try to reproduce the Batman. You know, for example, if you take a Batman, you breed it to like a normal ball python, essentially you won't reproduce the Batman because you have to actually breed it to a het clown or a visual clown in order to get two copies of the clown. So it's a little bit more difficult to make and a little more difficult to reproduce, especially if you're mixing other genes into the Batman. And when it comes to clown combos, I'd say it's probably one of the most impressive, one of the most in-demand combinations and probably demands some of the highest prices for some of the clown combos. As a matter of fact, if you're thinking about getting into Batmans, it's probably almost out of your price range, depending on what your price range is. I was actually looking over at Morph Market, and it's like in 2020 here, the cheapest Batman sell for over $2,000. Pretty crazy for one ball python. So today I want to jump over to the internet, and I want to show you the potential of the Batman ball python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on MorphMarket.com, and I want to show you the three genes that make up the Batman. Man. And the first one I want to show you is the clown. This is what the clown looks like. And the clown can be extremely variable. Sometimes it's really reduced on the sides as far as the pattern. And sometimes you can actually see, in this one you can actually see almost like the Roswell gray alien heads, which is kind of unusual for a clown. They can be really variable. Sometimes they'll have just a solid stripe right down the top instead of this kind of a spider web pattern. And when it comes to clowns, it's kind of interesting. When I started five years ago, I was looking at all the different recessive mutations, the pines and the clowns and the tri stripes and everything. And it was, I was actually looking at the clown. I was like, why are people so crazy over the clowns? Because it doesn't really look like that impressive of a combo just as a standalone morph. But if you actually work other genes into the clown, that is where the clown really shines. It's probably the king of combos when it comes to recessive mutations. We're mixing in with other genes. And another gene that is in the Batman is the leopard take a look at this and the leopard is a little bit underrated when you actually look at it just as a standalone morph it looks almost like a normal ball python as far as the colors and essentially what the leopard does is it really jumbles up the patterns on a lot of snakes and a lot of combinations and it really darkens the background if you if you start with a dark snake and add leopard they can really make it super dark and i'd say leopard is probably the king of combos when it comes to a co-dominant mutation it's actually co-dominant it. And then the other gene in the Batman is the spot nose. The spot nose almost looks like a normal too. And it's kind of interesting, a lot of these genes, there's a standalone morph. A lot of them aren't really that impressive until you start mixing them in with other genes and seeing the results, it's pretty amazing. And the spot nose, you can almost always tell a spot nose by looking at the head. The head has a really unusual head stamp, a really crazy pattern on the head. As a matter of fact, if you actually breed two spot noses together, you get the Powerball, which is a super spot nose which is a really it really explodes the pattern when you mix it in with certain combos it's a pretty awesome gene and if you actually take the spot nose and combine it with the leopard and the clown you actually get the batman take a look at this snake this is pretty amazing this is what everybody is crazy over you know looking at clown combos and the ultimate potential of the clown combos and it's kind of hard to actually see the spot nose in here because you know in a lot of clown combos just the clown has a really crazy head stamp. So you mix in the spot nose. As a matter of fact, I actually saw someone, you know, if you're really good at these genes, you can actually look at the pattern on the head and some some will say this kind of looks like, you know, uh, like, like, a, like a turtle man cartoon or something on the top of the head on the snake and they'll say, you know, based on that head pattern, we can tell exactly what genes are in the mix. Sometimes you can actually do it based on the head stamp and sometimes it can be pretty variable. And I kind of wanted to show you the ultimate potential of this working other genes into the Batman to make some really crazy looking snakes. And the first one, probably the best gene that I've ever seen worked into the Batman is the banana. And you're going to be blown away by this. This is the banana and the banana is actually a co-dominant mutation. So you breed it to something else, half the offspring come out as bananas. And you know, back in the day 
when the bananas first came out, they were selling for like $25,000 a snake. And now you can pick up bananas just for a few hundred bucks in most cases. And this is what happens if you actually take a banana and breed it into the Batman. Take a look at this crazy snake. This is probably one of the most impressive combos I've ever seen over here on Morph Market. And probably the first thing you're thinking is like, all right, I want to buy the banana Batman. How much is it going to cost me? I don't care. You know, I'll sell my car to actually buy into this project and you might be surprised at actually how much this actually is. <laughs> Take a look at this. This one is $7,000 for a banana batman. As a matter of fact, it's still for sale. It's, it's kind of interesting. Most of the times I pull up snakes that are already sold and if you're actually trying to reproduce this, that is really probably the toughest part of working on a lot of these Batman combos. So this actually has the leopard, the banana, the spot nose, and two copies of the clown. So this is actually a five gene combo. And I actually pulled up some genetic calculations over here on the World of Ball Python. Plugged it into my genetic calculator and if you actually took the banana Batman and you bred it to a 100% het clown, so you have to start with either a visual clown or a het clown to actually reproduce it, you would have a 1 in 16 chance of reproducing the banana Batman. Not very good odds. So if you're actually getting like, you know, I'd say like initially, usually your clutches of eggs are about, you know, six eggs per clutch or, you know, with like more mature ball python sometimes it'll be like eight eggs <laughs> you can actually breed this for two years straight have two clutches of eggs and only hit the banana batman one time and i think that is really the challenge as far as reproducing some of these combinations and that's really what's holding the price really high in a lot of these combos so here is a yellow belly ball python. The yellow belly interacts kind of interesting with the Batman. The yellow belly is kind of a sleeper morph. It's a standalone morph. It looks almost like a normal. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have a hard time picking out the differences between a yellow belly and a normal. And a lot of times they'll have a yellow belly <laughs> like you can see on this one. Sometimes it's not really that yellow, but kind of the indication of a yellow belly is a lot of times you'll have kind of a busy pattern along either side of the belly. You can see just a little little bit kind of crazy of a pattern on this one and sometimes you can see like a little stripe right on the tail and sometimes you'll see a little faded head and sometimes people say this is possibly a yellow belly because it's really hard to actually pick out in some cases but if you actually mix a yellow belly in with the Batman take a look at this this is one of my favorite Batmans this is a Batman yellow belly and the yellow belly just really explodes the pattern into little tiny spots and I think that's really the yellow belly working with the leopard to really explode the pattern into this crazy looking snake pretty amazing so here is the pastel and usually when you work pastel into other genes you, you tend to get a lot more of a yellow color it's usually you know it's a yellow morph and it really reduces the pattern and you can actually mix it with like fire and orange dream and and like a lot of the really the brightening genes that make some super bright snakes but the problem is if you actually mix pastel with clown it almost does completely the opposite instead of brightening it it tends to fade it out which is kind of an interesting anomaly between pastel and clown and so here's what happens if you work pastel into the Batman take a look at this it is pretty unbelievable how faded out it gets with pastel into the mix really reduces a lot of the color and really just explodes the pattern on this as a matter of fact if you actually had two copies of the pastel work it into the Batman it lightens it even more take a look at this one this is actually the super pastel Batman so it's, it's a super pastel leopard spot nose clown which is even harder to hit because you actually have two copies of the pastel and two copies of the clown so this is actually a six gene combo pretty difficult to hit but it's pretty amazing how it just really washes out the snake so here is the butter and when it comes to butter a lot of people think it's the same thing as the lesser they look almost exactly the same some people think it's the same the different lines of the same gene and when it comes to butters and lessers a lot of times it'll really increase the contrast and and the brightness of a lot of combos and here's what happens if you work butter into the Batman <laughs> take a look at this crazy thing this is the butter Batman and as a matter of fact if you work butter into a lot of the clown combos a lot 
lot of times it will really lighten the background as well. I actually have a lesser clown and they usually start with a lot of white and then they kind of, as they age, they kind of tend to fade out a little bit as they age and mature. It seems like, you know, especially with the lesser and the butter combos with the clown, they are really impressive and more defined as a hatchling and they kind of tend to lose their contrast as they age. So here is the Firefly talking about brightening jeans and it kind of works kind of just the opposite in the clown. This is actually the Fire and the Pastel. When you mix them together as a standalone morph, you actually get a really super bright yellow snake. As a matter of fact, I've seen some Fireflies as adults and they really keep their brightness as adults. It's pretty amazing. And here's what happens if you take Firefly and work it into a Batman. <laughs> Take a look at this crazy snake. This completely just jumbles up up the pattern into like someone just splattered it with paint pretty amazing and that is the ultimate power of the clown you start working working you know a lot of these jeans into the clown and you get completely different ex you know unexpected results compared to a lot of the other combos working other jeans into the clown so here's the last one I wanted to show you. This is kind of a kind of a higher end project. This is actually working confusion into a Batman. This is one of the projects I actually want to get into maybe next year. The problem is with the confusions is just to buy just a standalone confusion. It's about you know a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars if you're lucky. If you can actually pick them up before they actually sell, it's a really hot morph on the market. And if you actually look at it, it looks almost like a normal as far as the color but it really jumbles up the pattern, almost like a leopard on steroids. It's pretty amazing. And if you actually look at the belly of the confusion, you can actually take a look at this. It has a really crazy jumbled up belly on a lot of these confusions. I think that's the way you can actually tell if you have a confusion or not. You just flip it over, look at the belly, and if the belly pattern is all freckled, sometimes they have a really strong dark line right down the center of the belly in a lot of these confusions. And here's what happens if you were confusion in with the Batman. Take a look at this. This is really impressive. As a matter of fact, this actually has fire in the mix too. I was actually looking for a Batman with confusion without the fire and I really couldn't find it. So this is kind of a little bit faded because it has the fire in the mix, which tends to, to kind of fade it out. But you can definitely tell the confusion mixed with the leopard. Both of them really jumble up the pattern to where it's completely shattered. It's as far as the pattern it's kind of interesting the stripes that you have like a double stripe right down the back and it just kind of disappears into this exploding pattern pretty amazing as a matter of fact if you're if you're actually wondering about a price on this one that the confusion is really expensive so you take that and you work it into uh, i think this would be like a six gene combo into a highly sought after batman that is you know really hard to produce this is a crazy price this one's actually this one sold for twelve thousand dollars pretty amazing combination all right so it is time for the question of the day and Kevin Garcia asks what are the top three best-selling ball python morphs at reptile shows or on morph market and that is a very good question so in fact when I went to my very first reptile show I had my whole display set up I think I had about 60 hatchlings for sale I set it all up on an eight-foot table and before the show opened I was kind of going over in my head what do I think is the first ball python that is gonna sell from my display and I was thinking all right maybe it's the albino maybe it's you know usually the albinos and the pies and the clowns are really hot and super popular and believe it or not the very first snake that I ever sold was a normal ball python and the number two snake that I sold was a normal the number three snake that I sold was a normal it's pretty amazing that you know people are looking for a ball python but they don't want to spend a lot of money and they're kind of just going to shows you know looking for kind of a pet I would say a lot of people don't really have the money to invest and a lot of people aren't really thinking about breeding and a lot of people they'll just actually just pick up a normal ball python as the their first ever snake is pretty amazing. And I'd say as far as all the ball pythons that I've sold, normals are probably the number one bestseller. As a matter of fact, before that first reptile show, I was thinking, you know what? I should take all my 20 or 30 normals and just wholesale them and get rid of them. I didn't think they'd sell at shows. And come to find out, they're actually the number one bestseller at the reptile shows. And I'd say as far as the number two, probably, you know, is probably the, the, the single genes that are less than $100 I found 
on those are really hot like the lessers and the pinstripes and the pastels all those they you know people are looking for a really beautiful snake maybe they want to step up from a normal but you know they're really not looking to breed they're just looking for something pretty as a pet I'd say that's probably where 90% of the ball pythons go just looking for a pet something relatively inexpensive so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video